So for project two, I want to focus in on things that are specifically going to help people who are going into animation. And at East Tennessee State University, our program here, animation uh, does not really include as much of the modeling. That's much more in the game design side of the concentrations. Uh, so we're going to not model all of our assets for this next project. We're going to use some pre-made objects. I'm going to limit you to using models that are exclusively from this website. So this is thebasemesh.com. I'm going to do that for a couple of reasons. One, all of these things that it mentions here, clean topology, UV unwrapped, real world scale, and uh, most notably, none of them have materials. So in the animation concentration, we do focus a lot more on the lighting and rendering side of things. And so this will give us a chance to take some of these models and still create some materials for them, create some, uh, some lighting and rendering for them. Uh, the other reason we're going to limit you to this website um, one, there, there are plenty of models to choose from. There's over a thousand different models on here. Uh, but this right here, 100% free CC0 license. So what does CC0 mean? Um, let's go to frequently asked questions and we'll, we'll be able to find the answer in here. Can I use these assets in commercial work? So this is what CC0 is talking about. You can use these models, um, they're under the CC0 license, and there are no restrictions on how you can use these assets. So, CC0 is Creative Commons License 0. If we open this up in a new tab, this will explain to you um, what all of that means, but essentially it means that these are being released copyright free, that there is no copyright limitations on these, and if you wanted to take these models and use them and make a video game or an animated film, and make money off of that, they are fine with you doing that. So that means that the copyright on these, you're allowed to use them, right? And that's not true with every model that you can download on the internet. Uh, some of the models that you can buy from places like TurboSquid or that are just out there for you to download for free to use, those are for learning purposes only. And if you download those and use those in something that you make money off of, you're breaking the law, like you're, you're, you're stealing someone else's art and claiming it to be yours. So that is the legal side of this. Um, we do need to also talk about the educational side of this. Um, there's the academic honesty um, that, that you would be using. So, you know, later you may have a modeling class that requires you to model a guitar uh, or something like that. And just going in here and finding... Um, this guitar and being like, hey, I downloaded that instead of modeling it. That's plagiarism. It's legal to do that. Like, nobody can sue you from the United States government, but you would get an F in the class for doing that. So just recognizing that something being accessible for free on the internet doesn't mean you can use it for anything. And if you are using some of these models in class, you need to let people know that you didn't create this, that the thing you are claiming is responsibility for the animation or the lighting and rendering, but the model comes from somewhere else. So when we create this project, we are going to put a little disclaimer at the very end of the video that said these models were sourced uh, from thebasemesh.com, right? We don't legally have to do that. We're doing that so later other teachers will be able to see that and, and realize that you are claiming responsibility for the parts you did. So I'm going to look through here and so again, if we're, if we're just on the basemesh.com, you just go to view library, and there are hundreds of models in here. And some of them are like, well, this avocado, it's pretty much a sphere, right? Like that's not that impressive of a model. But then we have this axe, which is actually kind of nice. Like this is a pretty nice, pretty well done model. So when I click on this, it's going to tell us a little bit of information about it. And we'll see the number of tries in here. So it's the number of triangles that go into making up this model. So uh, we talk, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but you know, the difference between triangles and quads. And so this is measuring it in triangles because sometimes maybe not all of the polygons are, are quads in here. It is UV unwrapped, and we'll talk more about what that means here in a bit. And then there's these different model formats. And so this is the type of file formats that you can download and use for this. Um, what I want you to recognize is that .mb, the Maya file, um, my file type is not listed here, right? We have .fbx, we have .obj, we've got .glb. Um, Maya, I think actually Maya can recognize all three of these. 
But these first two, OBJ and FBX, are pretty universal file formats from, or sending a model from one piece of software to another. So I'm going to be using the .fbx file. Uh, you'll also see that we have this image down here, and if you click and tumble, you'll actually see it's not an image. It's a, an interactive file here. And so you can see the model from different sides. This was created with, um, it's called Marmoset Toolbag. This is a, a, a GPU rendering uh, software that you can embed in websites. And one of the things that's really neat about this is I can see it from any angle, but I can also see different pieces of information about this. One of the things I want to look at is if I click this layer views, I want to be able to see the topology. We're going to be deforming this model. And since we're going to be deforming it, we need to see does it have topology that is going to be useful for the deformations that we're going to create, right? Um, if I need this to bend along this handle, I need a decent amount of divisions in here so that bend shape can actually happen, right? We can't bend a straight line. So this is really nice to be able to get, look at the topology and recognize that Again, this is not called the finished model.com. This is the base mesh, right? We are going to download this to get ourselves a starting point, and we may have to make a couple of changes here and there to, to make this actually um, the model we need, right? Um, I like this axe. I'm going to go ahead and download that. So I'll download this, and you're going to see it's going to give me a zip file. And this is where I'm going to utilize that folder structure that we made earlier. So again, I'll go back to that. It is on my D drive, and we're going to see this projects too, and where I'm going to put this just as like a, a storage place so I can have models that I've downloaded but not have them getting in the way, I'm going to store those under assets. Right? So that's the location I want to put this. I can copy that path, paste it up here, and I'm going to go ahead and save that. So I'm going to download a couple more um, models as well. And I want to be able to show you a couple of different elements. So that axe might be nice for rigging or for doing some basic materials on. Right? Um, I'm going to look at uh, maybe something a little bit more uh, decorative, right? Um, let's say, is it tools? Maybe let's see what we get under tools. Uh, I actually know what I'm looking for, but I can't remember where it's stored. Oh, this hammer's nice. That might make a nice one. Uh, plunger, pliers. Uh, no, I think what I'm going to do is just search for this. And what I'm looking for is a, a barrel. And you'll see that there's actually three different kinds that come up here. And I'm going to try this wooden barrel. So I can download that. And so I get wooden barrel. It's going to go to my folder here as well. And then the last thing I want is I want another one that I've seen in here. This one is under the nature uh, section here. I can clear out barrel. There's no barrels in nature. And I want to use this mushroom right here. So you'll see we have a whole family of mushrooms here if you want to tell a story with some mushrooms. Um, I like this one because if I click on it and tumble around, um, you get these little, these little, this little skirt underneath here. And again, if I look at my topology, I can see like this is some some pretty good topology. Uh, I'm gonna have to add some more divisions here or there to to uh, give me another point to bend. Um, yeah, this is looking good. I'm gonna download this one as well. Save, and I'm gonna go ahead and just go to that location where I downloaded those and look at these files I downloaded. So these are zip files. Um, if you're unfamiliar with this, a zip file is an archive file. It's if you need to send somebody a whole bunch of different files, and you you know, let's say you have a hundred pictures you need to send someone, uh, you don't want to, have to send them a hundred different things, right? It, this is a way to archive them all in one location and send that one file, and then they can extract it once they have it. And so that's what this is. And so I'm just going to extract each of these. Linux and Mac and all the Mac and all the operating systems have different extraction tools that will allow you to extract these uh, zip files. So if I just right click on here, extract all, and I'll just go ahead and leave that and say extract. You'll see that now it's extracted it out here into a folder. And so I can do that with all of these. And so now 
I can actually delete these zip files if I would like. They're not taking up that much room, but maybe it's a little, little clearer to see here. And so if I go to my Axe folder, you'll see that there's those three files that I need. In the next video, we're going to import in some of these files and uh, alter them and refine them so we can use those for Project 2.